<laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of the Edmonds Racing Weekly Show. It is Friday, the 12th of February. I am back. Contrary to popular belief, I have uh, not been beaching it. And uh, in fairness, a long way from the beach out there at the English Classic Sale at the uh, Riverside Stables at Warwick Farm. Trent, you spent some time there at Warwick Farm. A fair way from the beach, I'd say. Very long way. Very long way. The beautiful George's River, uh, <laughs> separating Warwick Farm and Chipping Norton. Wouldn't be swimming in there. Too many bull sharks. So um, I think you've probably done pretty well to stick to the horses. Yeah, just uh, the pool, the pool and the uh, William Inglis Hotel. I'll, I'll stick to that, I'd say, going forward. <laughs> Mate, a it was a big, big sale, the classic sale. It was, um, uh, gee whiz, it was an amazing sale. I think a record-breaking sale in, in many respects. The, the healthy industry is just, um, oh, it's just so buoyant. There's so much prize money. Everyone's willing to play. There wasn't one dominant buyer at the sale, but it was just very hard buying on, on the ones you really, you're really keen on. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, I think I bid on eight or nine horses and I got um, dusted majority of the time, which was a real pain in the backside, but um, maybe my tastes are too expensive. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but in, in any case, uh, you know, we come away with a, uh, a steal, I think. We bought a uh, really nice Rubik filly, lot 263 out of Red Roses 2. She's obviously from the family of Melito. Uh, Pariah, who is now a stallion, who actually had a very good, well, his first two sales of the year, his first yearling selling, Magic Millions and Classic Sale, um, had some ripping types. And, uh, you know, she's from the family of, of those two, just to name a couple. And as you can see, the uh, footage on the screen now, really nice Rubik filly. We've had a bit of luck with the sire, obviously, Ruka, um, who we'll talk about a little bit later as well. You know, so, and obviously the sire of, Everest winner. Yes, yes, yes. So um, she's going to get every chance. I just thought she was a ripping bit of value there for 40000 Yeah, for Great Farm, New Haven Park. I was going to say, you toiled away. We toiled away. You got beaten plenty. And then to land her at 40 was just a little cherry on top, like a, a just reward for, for all the hard work out there over the last um, seven days, mate. So so well done. Out of the not a single doubt mare too. She looks like a jump and run fully. Big, deep girth on her um, and, you know, with all our racing up here for two-year-olds in Queensland, we've got, I think, more two-year-old races than any other um, state um, pre the 1st of January. So, um, you know, it's a great opportunity up here to win prize money with her and, and hopefully qualify her for a race like the English Millennium. I think that's sort of might be right in a sort of little, um, little slot, you know, nice precocious flea like that. So... Very well bought off a great farm, $40,000. I'll get that uh, email out to all our... Um, uh, supporters today and if you'd like to jump in she's no money at all and she'll jump and run and hopefully give us a lot of fun so um please be in touch there mate through the week uh, we had seven runners the pines bounced back in and great style there at the sunny coast on sunday nice to see her back mate yeah bruce the pines she was um outstanding to be fair she uh it was obviously a very small field um but it was just great to see her back after what has been an extended layoff. She had an entrapped epiglottis, um, hence the reason for the layoff. We had that repaired or fixed, and um, she's been really good. I thought her work, especially since that last trial, she's had three trials, two without blinkers, which I thought were only fair, but to be fair to her, she's probably getting fit. Third one with blinkers on, I thought was outstanding, and she showed what she can do up there on Sunday, loves the Sunshine Coast. I don't think she's had a loss there from memory. Um, so, you know, she's a really good, solid Sunshine Coast horse. And it's just great to see her back for the Matheson family and, and uh, all their friends as well. Ian and Kath, they're just absolutely staunch supporters of our stable and have been for a number of years now. Love winning races for them. Uh, they all went up there and supported her. So um, it was great to see her back in the fashion that... Uh, she did, and she can go to Saturday grade now and hopefully win her first Saturday race. She's, I think she's won six races, and she's still eligible for a No Metro win. So, um, you know, we've placed her well to this point. Yeah, absolutely spot on. Looked like a real black type mare in the making uh, through her first prep, and it looks like she's bounced back to that form. Uh, five second placings, two amongst the seven runners. So, 
you know, the horses are all running right around the mark. I know you, you would be the same, mate. You, you see a second place like a victory, right? Like um, just knowing the horses run well, that wouldn't frustrate you at all. <laughs> Well, no, I hate running second, but they are. <laughs> I, it really shits me. They are. <laughs> they are running. They're running really well. Uh, the Lioness was a good stable debut. Call me Maggie. Very uh, honest at Ballina. Uh, Biz class. We've all sort of, you know, we know the trials and tribulations we've been through with her to, to get her into the barriers and whatnot. So I thought she was quite soft leading into that debut run. She was very good. Uh, you know. So they're not, they're obviously not far off. She's our boss was really good again, and she'll head to a forty nine meter race next start. Third up be Brockhard Fit and ultra competitive. Yeah, absolutely knocking on the door a few of those. So they'll be no doubt to convert into some wins over the coming weeks for their owners. Well done, mate. All right, well let's look at some winners for this weekend. It's uh, it's a light sort of week, but we're going to Doombin uh, for Saturday's Metro meeting. It's a good four there currently, and. Uh, You've got runners engaged in race seven, eight, and nine, the last three legs of the quaddy. So uh, for those punting subscribers to this show, um, you'll be listening carefully here. Race seven, Grey Mistile, drawn barrier nine, Ronnie Stewart aboard. He's a $9 third pick in the uh, Open 1350. I suppose two of his best runs of the last six months um, may have been on this track and distance. How's he going? Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, he enjoys Doombin and he enjoys 1350. Importantly as well, down in the weights again, uh, which I like for him. He, has, he hasn't run since the 2nd of January, but I see that as no concern. We've kept him right up to the mark. Work has been outstanding. Uh, so I would suggest if he can get the right run in transit tomorrow, he's going to take a power of beating. The horse is going really well. I think he's back to... The level we seen him at probably 12 months ago now. Um, not too sure why he was sort of mixing his form a little bit and, and uh, basically not hitting the line. But from what we've seen between runs, um, you know, it's been super encouraging. I'd be very surprised if he didn't run an absolute bottle there tomorrow. Uh, Ronnie just needs to be pretty positive out to clear a couple of them down below him. And uh, this horse will race really well, going super. Very good. Ominous words there from the co-trainer, Trent Edmonds. $9. Can't see him starting that. I think, Gar is that the race Garibaldi's favourite for? No, that's a socialising race, isn't it? Yes, correct. Socialising race. Very good. All right. Socialising the horse to beat there, according to the market. But $9 looks attractive for Grey Missile. Race 8, Great Keppel. Uh, also drawn barrier 9, Ryan Maloney, the pug on board. $9.50 fifth pick. Interesting here. Um, Horse in good form, obviously um, probably having the prep of his life, but out to a mile for the second time. Um, does like the track he's placed here or won here, 7 of 11 starts. Yeah, exactly right. I thought his last run here the other day was pretty good, to be fair. Um, Ryan just needs to probably give him a good steer in the first furlong of the race to find that midfield spot with a bit of cover. Um, and... Actually, Ryan rides this horse really well. He's right on him three starts back when he won at Doom and over the 13 15 at Class 6 was outstanding. Uh, so if he could reproduce one of those, that would be great. He is on trial at the mile. He probably needs just a little bit of speed on. Um, so he does everything correctly and it allows him to relax and finish off. If he does that, I think he can look the winner at some stage. Um, as I said, on trial at the mile, we've always thought that he'd run it and run it to good effect. Uh, so I thought while he's in good form, it's a race there at Dooman where he races well and um, we'll give him a crack. If he can run it and win or, or races really well, then it opens up a lot more options sort of going forward and he's not just pigeonholed to that 1350, 1400 metre distance range. So a um, little bit of a fork in the road moment for him tomorrow, but I'm confident that uh, given the right ride and given the right run in transit, He's good each way chance. Very good. All right. Well, good luck there to the uh, Sejano team and, and their fellow owners. Of course, Great Keppel goes around in those red colours with the yellow seams. Good luck to all involved. Race nine, Ruka. Uh, terrific uh, around the Magic Millions Carnival. He's drawn barrier 12, though, which is a bit tricky. Jimmy Byrne aboard a $6.50 shot in this race. Um, gee, he was super last time out, Trent uh, V. Yao Dash and Marcinane. Yeah, he was great. Um, maybe 1,300 might have just pulled him up on that occasion. 
and he didn't have the greatest deal of luck, not a huge amount of momentum when he needed to. So, uh, you know, we were, we were thrilled with the run. Horse is going great. Interestingly enough, obviously he met Garibaldi um, a couple of starts back, three starts back for our guy, gave him weight and beat him on that occasion. Uh, I think there's a three kilo weight swing this week. Um, our guy's just drawn that touch awkward. So yet again, going to need a, a good ride from Jim. I would suggest we're second half of the field, no further forward than midfield with a little bit of cover. Hopefully, or at worst, three wide line. Um, and then can just track into the race and get them down late. Certainly showing no signs of training off. Um, going good. If he was to win there tomorrow, um, we might even look at taking him to Melbourne with the other two boys that departed last night. And um, I think there was a race on All-Star Mile Day at the Valley, which he's uh, won there before. So he obviously likes the track, but he'd need to be winning tomorrow to warrant going down. Very good. All right. Well, that's exciting. Um, Ruka could be heading towards Melbourne. Um, but first up, we see him in the last race there at Dooman. Mate, I just want to give the stable a plug here. I have been here for just over 12 months. And these three horses that are running on Saturday, I'm, between them, I must have spoken about them about 25 to 30 times. That is, they've had about 25 to 30 starts between them since I've been here. They're four-year-old, five-year-old and six-year-old geldings. Every time they go around, they're a winning chance. You obviously, you know, just a wrap on the stable and keeping horses fresh, keeping horses happy, healthy, in good form and sound. Um, and that's things to massive credit to you guys in the stable. Like just these older horses that just stick around and every time they line up on a Saturday for good prize money um, and they're in with the winning chance. So I um, just wanted to mention that. I thought that was outstanding just on reflection this morning. Thanks, Bruce. That's, uh, that's a good start for your Friday morning. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Pump up the tyres. Very yeah. good, mate. Well, uh, <laughs> to help us out a bit more after those uh, nice comments, can you find us a winner? Who's the best of those three uh, on Saturday? I'm going to go the grey. I, I've really loved his last few bits of work, um, particularly Tuesday morning. I haven't seen him work up that good and strong and work right up to the line like that for a, a very long time now. So um, when they work as good as he did Tuesday morning, unless he's just not genuine, they don't come out and race poorly. He, he'll, uh, he'll give a really good show tomorrow. Very good. There you go. Best bet of the weekend, Grey Missile. Race seven at Doom. And good luck to Tom Headley in those famous, famous colours. All right. Well, listen, we'll um, be in touch uh, today with the TV show. Of course, before that, we'll, um, we'll send out the Rubik filly quite seriously, particularly this year. There might not be a, a cheaper filly bought all year at 40 grand. So she's uh, something everyone can come into and come and race with us. So please do get in touch if you have some interest. Um, just to touch on our March 6th yearling parade at the Gold Coast, I think um, gee, I think we're fully booked there, but if we're not fully booked, we're very close to it. So if you were keen to come out and see those yearlings purchased from Magic Millions, um, please do RSVP with Izzy in the office. Um, like I say, that's, uh, that function has been really popular and booked out very quickly. Big shout out to everyone that's jumped into horses with us. Um, uh, from a sales and a shares front, it's just been outstanding and um, we're very, very grateful for that and just really excited about where these young horses might see us in the next 12 to 24 months. So thanks very much for that. Have a great weekend, everybody. If you've got a runner, good luck. Otherwise, um, enjoy your uh, time. Otherwise, Cheers. enjoy your weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Bruce. <laughs>